Hello everyone, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel and welcome to week 8 of our iRacing Global Mazda MX-5 Cup Track Guide series. Now week 8 brings us to the wonderful Okiyama, but Okiyama short, so it's a little bit more tricky to overtake. Now if you've followed my track guides before, you'll know that they are not a place for hot laps. It's a slow, methodical approach to learn the circuit where I talk about my braking markers, my reference points and the little quirks that each circuit has. So as usual, I will show you the flying lap in full, then we'll jump in the car, do a few laps, and show you those braking markers and reference points in action. Then we'll talk about pit entry, pit exit, and at the end, I'll talk about where I think you can realistically get an overtake done this week at Okiyama. So enough talking, let's get on track. So here we are then on the main straight here at Okiyama Short. So as usual, we've set the sim time to match the official series. So it's the 5th of February 2022 and the time in the sim is 12.20pm. We're also using the iRacing baseline setup, which is what is used in the official series. And for information right now, track temperature is 36 degrees Celsius, exactly the same as it was in the flying lap that you've just seen. Now Okiyama, it's a brilliant little circuit for the Mazda but it's notoriously difficult to overtake or notoriously easy to defend, whichever way you look at it. But it can be done. You just need to be a little bit smarter and set them up in advance because the biggest overtaking opportunity down the long straight into the tight right has been taken away with the short version. So, turn number one. Approach it as usual. We're going to be fourth gear down here. Move the car right off to the left-hand side. We're going to be in fourth gear. We're not going to be using fifth gear this week. So, fourth gear all the way down to turn number one and we're going to be going down into second gear now i break just before the tire marks that you can see there those tire marks stay there all the time so around about here we're going to be breaking in a straight line and we're going to be just apexing this one as usual it's a 90 degree corner usually on the full circuit when we get around this right we need to move the car over to the right hand side for the left but because a big section of track has been taken away we're just going to apex this one as normal so we're going to be breaking quite hard, trail breaking to the apex. And ideally, you want to touch a bit of this inside curb. Wherever you can in the Mazda, try and use a bit, of, a bit of the inside curb because that will help the car rotate. So second gear around here, then let the car drift all the way out to the left-hand side. You might need to lift on exit if you haven't quite got it right, but that's fine. As long as you've got the momentum going, it's perfectly fine. And then we're going to keep the car over to the left hand side for turn number two which is a double apex right hander so you can see just in front of us there there are some or there is some dirt on the road surface so just at the end of those this dirt we're going to be starting to turn into the right hand side for the first part of turn number two and we're going to be breaking kind of in the middle of the track and aiming for this first apex uh, in second gear now, braking quite hard, hold the brake, and when you get to about this point, mid-corner, we're going to be shifting down to first, still turning right, and that shift down to first will just help the car rotate around. Now, you might have to just modulate the throttle. Ideally, you can cut a little bit of this grass on the inside, but you've got to be very careful of a neutral throttle. Don't be stamping on it at this point because you will lose traction. So it's quite a late apex turn number two for the second part because we want to open up 
this left hander would need the car over to the right hand side and at this point i short shift to second and then again you can cut a bit of this inside curb but just be very very careful nice smooth throttle this is all about momentum let the car drift all the way off out wide you can get a um, tire on the grass there and you won't get an off track that's fine but just be very careful with your throttle inputs but all the way down here up to third and then just after the 50 board we're going to be breaking in a straight line again this is all about momentum down to second and down to first and get on the gas nice and early here and then here it's a tricky one this one now on a flying lap you can see a change in the road surface color so right above my instrument cluster there, you can see it's dark and then there's a very very small light patch that's where we're going to be breaking for turn number five just there, there's a light patch so we get on the brakes there middle of the circuit turn in and it's the earlier you get on the gas here the better as soon as you see the end of the curb on the right or just before we're stamping on the gas keep turning right the car will get round it'll drift all the way out to the left hand side but keep accelerating up to second then short shift to third and we're going to be turning in early because that one's blind touching the curb on the right try not to touch too much try not to get any wheels over the curb because the car will bounce it's fine you won't lose control but it just it's a little bit unsettling when you've got to think about this final turn which is crucial so braking marker for the final turn is just after the end of the green astroturf or the end of the curb on the left hand side that's where we're going to be braking down into second gear and here we want to be using a bit of the curb it's vital to use the curb on the left hand side because that helps the car rotate and as soon as you're on the curb get on the gas really early the car will run all the way out wide you can use all of this on the exit you won't get an off track you can even put your left tires on the sand and you won't get an off track right let's pick up the pace and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense as we pick up the pace so just after the dunlop sign we're looking for the tire marks are in fourth gear we're going to be going down into second gear touching the curb on the inside for rotation then get on the accelerator the car will run out wide up to third looking for the dirt on the road there it is so we're going to turn in then brake then down to first gear here nice and smooth with your inputs this is all about momentum and just after the 50 board on the right we're going to be braking so we're on the right hand side of the circuit break it down to second then just before we turn in down to first don't don't downshift too early into first gear wait until the cars you're almost about to turn then accelerate out there up to second then short shift to third on the first few laps you might need a little lift here then just after the curbs on the left we're going to be braking down to second gear use the curb on the inside then get on the gas and see the just that extra rotation you get by using the curb right we'll try and pick up the pace a little bit now so just before the tire marks we're going to be braking down into second gear just touch the curb on the inside and get on the gas car will drift out wide looking for the dirt on the road surface there it is so at the end of the dirt then we're going to be braking down to second and down to first and nice and smooth here short shift to second again nice and smooth you can see my inputs i'm just trying to be nice and neutral so up to third just after the 50 board we're going to be braking down into first gear just before we get to the apex then get on the accelerator nice and early and then same here then get on the gas early the car will run out wide but you can get round up to second and a short shift to third touch the curb on the inside and same with this one down to second again touch the curb and get on the accelerator just gives you that boost of acceleration or rotation sorry right one more lap we'll try and pick up the pace so again just before the tie marks down to second gear use that curb for the rotation keeping the accelerator up to third gear end of the dirt we're going to start to turn then brake and down into first gear and get on the accelerator here short shift to second nice and smooth around here just after the 50 board we're going to be braking then down to first gear at the last moment and get on the accelerator the car will get round looking for the light patch of tarmac there there it is so on the brakes and again nice and early on the gas here 
Again, short shift to third. Just after the curb on the left, we're going to brake. Down to second gear. Use that curb for the rotation on the inside. Use all of that on the left on exit. And there we go. So that's a reasonable-ish lap of Okayama. So that's a 57, uh, 59.7. I think on the flying lap we did a 59.5. I think we did. Something like that. So there is a bit more time still there. The tyres aren't quite up to temperature. Uh, it does take two or three laps for the tyres to get up to full operating temperature. It's only a short lap, so just bear that in mind on the first few laps. Just take it nice and easy. Get the tyres up to temp. And you'll be absolutely fine. Right, let's have a look at pit entry, pit exit. And at the end, we're going to have a look at where we can overtake here at Okayama. So pit entry here at Okayama. It's actually quite tricky. It's a horrible little pit lane, this, with two really tight right-handers that you need to be mindful of. So you come out of turn number five. Before we go around turn number six, we need to move the car over to the right-hand side. You can see the pit-in sign there. So move the car over to the right-hand side. You're just leaving it in second gear around here. And then again, there's another tight right just as we approach pit lane. Now, you'll see the warning come up there for entering pit lane there, the speed limit. But the actual yellow cone isn't here. So we need to make sure that we're in first gear and we get the pit limiter on before the yellow cone. Now, pit exit at Okayama. It's not the best, to be honest, because the blue cone ends just at the turning point for turn number one. So you just need to make sure you keep an eye on your relative as you exit pit lane. So there's the green cone. We can release the pit limiter at that point. And then you can see the blue cone there. We can't move over to the left-hand side until after the blue cone. So we're stuck here. We can't go anywhere. And this is the turning point for turn number one. So just make sure you keep an eye on your relative as always. If there's somebody coming by to lap you, just back off a little bit. Let them by. And then you can carry on with your race. Right. Overtaken then. An Okayama short. Difficult, but it can be done. So, overtaking at Okayama is difficult at the best of times. But when they take out two opportunities... And give you the short version it becomes a little bit more tricky but it still can be done but there's only three opportunities here that i can see where i can overtake now the obvious one is going to be going down the inside into turn number one if you've got the inside line into turn number one and you hold an inside line then you're going to have that inside line going into turn number two the move's done finished but people won't give you the inside line will they when you're racing they're going to defend they're going to cover the inside line, which is fine. I think you want to try and get somebody to outbreak themselves into turn number one. And you want to take your normal line. So somebody's going to be defending here. It's just instinct. People want to break later than somebody else. They think if they break later, then they're going to make the turn in front of them. But that's not always the case. So we're going to be on our normal line over here. The guy that's defending on the inside is going to break later, which means that, yes, he might make the apex, but his exit is going to be compromised, and he'll probably have to lift to get around this turn. So he's going to be straight ahead of us, heading towards the curbs. But we're just going to take our normal line and get the inside line for turn number two. So that's where I think is the best place to get an overtake done if somebody's defending. Let them out break themselves into turn number one, then we'll have the inside line for turn number two. Now, following on from that, this is another place to, to set up an overtake, really. But we're going to overtake going into turn number four. So here, it's all about the exit. You want somebody to be rushing. You want somebody to be looking in their mirror. You don't want them to be concentrating on the optimum line. But whilst they're worrying and whilst they're doing all that, we are focusing on the optimum line. And we're going to take this as normal. Because if they're looking in the mirror, they're not going to be looking at the apex. So we're going to take this line as normal, get a better exit out of turn number three than they do, and then hopefully we'll be able to get the inside line for turn number four. And the chances are, if you've got the inside line here, then they're not going to hold the outside line of going around turn number four. Then we could just move over, inside line, turn number five. Thank you very much. Job done. So there's not many places. The rest of it is just a procession. There's not many places to do it. So my advice would be down the inside to turn number one if you can. If somebody defends into turn number one, fine. Let them outbreak themselves. 
push a little bit too deep into the turn. We're going to switch back, take the inside line into turn number two. Alternatively, we're going to focus on our exit out of turn number three and get them into turn number four. It's not easy. You need to race people that are clean because Okiyama is one of them circuits where people get frustrated. And if you watch my race a few weeks ago, you'll see that sometimes... The only way people can get past is by barging you out of the way. So just bear in mind, make sure that you know that who you're racing with and make sure that you know that they're going to race you clean. So there we go. That's week eight done here at Okiyama Short. Please let me know down below in the comments how you get on. What were your times before the guide and what were your times after? Did I help? Did I cover everything that you wanted to be covered in a track guide? Now, week nine, we go to a go-kart track, essentially. It's Summit Point Jefferson. That place is absolutely crazy. As always, thank you for watching. Good luck this week. Keep it pinned.